for today's lesson seven, we'll be talking about how to find the part when we're dealing with percents. So finding the percent of a number can be helpful in everyday life. So when we have a percent, sometimes we want to actually figure out what does that percent represent in real life. So for example, at Paulson Middle School, 75% of the sixth grade class is making a B or higher. If there are 24 students in the sixth grade, then how many are making a B or higher? So as you can see here, we have the percent. We don't actually know how many students that is. We just know that it's 75% of all of the students. It's not an actual number of students. The label is percent, not students. So now the next sentence says, if there are 24 students in the sixth grade, meaning if the total number of students, the whole number of students is 24, then what is the actual number of students that are making up that 75%, the ones that are getting the B or higher? And what we call that is the part. So we've got the percent, the whole, and the part. So what we know is the percent, and we know the whole value as well is 24 students. What do we need to know while well, we're trying to find the part? Meaning the number of students making a B or higher. So in this next part, are we looking for the part or the whole? We're looking for the part, okay? Now, there is a way to draw this as a diagram. If you choose not to use these diagrams for the most part, that's okay. I'm going to show you another method on the back page of the notes. But this diagram can be really helpful to visualize what's happening with a percent. So our percentage is 75%. So what I'm going to actually do is break this diagram into four pieces because what I know is that these four pieces would be 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100%. So depending on the number of your percentage, you would break your diagram into different numbers of pieces. Okay, and then we know the whole number of students. So think about this. If you're talking about percents, what would be the whole? What would be the total, the maximum amount? Well, that would be the 100%. So we're going to match that up and on the bottom put the actual number of students. Because these percents don't tell me that there's 100 students or 75 students. They tell me just it's a ratio. So we have to actually translate our ratio into our real life scenario, which is the 24 whole number of students. So what we're going to do now is figure out where to put the part on this question. So the part is actually just going to match with the percent that we were looking at in the problem. So the 75%. So we're looking to see what number is here. What number of students matches with 75%. So notice that we broke the top into, 25, into 25s. The bottom, if we split up 24 into four pieces, we know that each one has to be six. So six, 12... 18, 24. And so that gives us our answer, 18 students. And that is using a tape diagram, a strip diagram. Couple more examples we're not gonna solve. We're just going to set them up with the diagram to see if we can get a feel for what this diagram does. So the campus demographics state that 40% of students are male. So there's our percent. If there are 300 students, then how many are male? So the 300 students isn't a small group. It's everyone. So we know that that's our whole value. So we have 40% and 300 as our whole. And what we're trying to find is how many are male. We want to know if this 40% is male, how many actual people is that? It's not 40 people. It's 40% of the whole value, which is 300. So to start, 
if we want to put 40 on our tape diagram here, I'm thinking that maybe I'll count by 20s because I know that my tape diagram is going to max out always at 100%. And I'm trying to think of a way to count up to 100% that will include my 40%. So if I do 1, 2, 3, 4. Those are not very evenly spaced. We just need 5 equal pieces there. I suppose that's good enough. So that's going to be 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. So we broke down our 100% into 20s so that we would actually be able to see where the 40% is exactly. Okay, now 300 whole, so 300 is the total, that's going to match with the 100%. The whole and the 100% always go together. Whatever your whole value is, it matches with 100% when you're doing a tape diagram. Okay, and now what we're trying to solve for is whatever the number is that matches with the 40%. We are not actually going to solve it, so we're going to move on to the next one. So for our next method, it's called a proportion. Okay, and setting up a proportion, we've heard this word before, can be helpful when the problems are more complicated. What I mean by that is when the numbers are not nice, it's definitely not going to be easy to use this tape diagram method. But the proportion method right here always works. And we use it in a lot of different scenarios. So it's definitely a really valuable tool for you if you just want to stick with this one and choose not to use the tape diagram method. Okay, so a proportion, again, to remind you, is just two equal fractions. And the last time we encountered the proportion, it was when we were talking about ratios and rates. So let's try to use the diagram and see how that looks. Sometimes the diagrams just aren't that helpful. So the campus demographics state that 42% of students are male. So this is just like the one we did up here, except instead of having that nice 40%, we have 42%. So we're going to say, okay, this is 0% always. This is 100% always. Where do I put the 42? Well, I can't really think of a number that's going to go into this 42 and into this 100. So what I'm going to just do is estimate where to put it. So this would be half, so 50%. And then the 42% maybe is like right here, just a little bit before the 50%. Okay, and now we have 300 students. Total, so that's our whole, again, exactly like the example we did earlier. And we want to know how many are male. Another way to say that is what part of the 300 whole students are male? Or what is 42% of the whole number of students? Okay, so I'm going to match my 300 here with my 100% because the 100% and the 300 are going to go together because they're both representing the whole. And what we want to find is what is 42% matching up with? Well, here's the problem. We didn't have a way to break down this diagram. So we don't have any way where we can do what we did up here and break down the bottom part in the same manner that we broke down the top with the percents. So this method just isn't going to work. When we use a proportion... We actually can set this up very quickly. Ready? So as long as you can figure out what is the percent, what is the part, and what is the whole, you are able to set your proportion up. It's the same thing every single time. The percent has the percent sign, so it's 42%, but I'm going to write 42 over 100, and that's the first fraction of your proportion. Now, the part and the whole, we already identified these here. We said the whole was 300 and that we didn't know the part. So we would say that we're filling in this blank space on the top. You don't even have to write anything there. You just have to figure out how to get there. So if I were to solve this really quickly, what I'm noticing is that if these are supposed to be equal fractions, I could just do times 3 on the bottom. 100 times 3 is 300. Keep them equal. Do the same thing on the top. Whatever 42 times 3 is. 126. There's my answer. 126 male students. Okay? 
In number three, there are 80 local Little League teams. 30% of them have players under the age of seven. How many teams have players under the age of seven? This is one of those questions where we do actually have to cross out some information. It shows numbers, but those numbers are not actually relevant to the problem. They're called a description. They're not actually a number that will be used in the solution. So we have 80 teams, okay? 30%, so there's our percent. I'll write it off to the side. 30% have players under the age of seven. That's just a descriptor. The number seven is not going to be used in this math problem. And we're saying that we want to find how many players are under the age of seven. So when we set this up, two equal fractions, fill in your percent. So right away, it's 30%, 30 over 100. So always just the number over 100, okay? And now that 80, is that the part or the whole? In this case, it's 80 teams, meaning 80 total teams. So it's the whole value, and I'm going to put it right on the bottom. The number of players that are under the age of 7 is the 30%. So it's part of the total 80 teams. So there's 80 total teams. Part of them have younger players. And we're going to find that part. So in this case, I don't see a direct way across here. We're going to use a different method. So in this case, if we do 30 over 100, we know that that's just the same as 3 over 10, meaning divide the top and the bottom by 10. And I just rewrote it the same on the other side. Now I can see that it's really just times eight to get across the bottom. Do the same thing on the top since these are equal and you'll get your final answer of 24 teams, meaning 24 teams have those players that are under the age of seven. Okay, number four, in Seattle, Washington, it is said to rain 66% of the time. So there's our percent. Since there are 365 days in a year, approximately how many days is it expected to rain? Okay, so we need to figure out percent part whole. Percent is always the easiest one, 66%, so 66 over 100. And now is this 365 only the days it rains, or is it every single day? Well, Considering the next part says how many days is it expected to rain, I think that 365 must be our whole value. It's all the days, not just the days where it's expected to rain. We're trying to find the 66% of days where it rains. Okay, this one, we're going to try another method. So when I look at this one, it's maybe not obvious how to get across here. I'm going to show you another method. When you can't figure out how to get across, divide. If you don't know what to multiply by, divide. So you would do 365 divided by 100. I'm not going to show this out, but if you do it, you're going to get 3.65. So when you don't know what to multiply by, use long division or just division. So now do the same thing on the top. We can multiply the 3.65 by 66. But if you do this one out, you're going to get 240. Point nine. So now you're like, oh, that's weird. Why'd we get a decimal? Well, if you look right here, it says approximately. So that's telling you that you can round your answer. So I would say that 240.9 is pretty close to 241. So 241 days of rain. And then our last example, at the post office, 45% of packages ship as priority mail. If 160 packages are shipped today, then how many will not go as priority mail? So this one's got another little trick to it. The 45% is the ones that ship by priority mail. So I'm going to say, um, let's just write it like this. PM, priority mail, is 45%. Okay, 160 packages are shipped today, meaning the total number of packages the whole number is 160. Okay, and the part, the missing piece here, is how many will not go as priority mail. So what we want to find is 
not priority mail. Problem is our percent is the ones that are priority mail. So we got to figure out what is not priority mail going to be. Well, if 45% are priority mail and the total would be 100%, just subtract 100 minus 45 and you're going to get 55 percent are not priority mail. So we don't actually need to use this number. So I'm going to write 55 percent. So 55 over 100 equals to my part over whole. So the whole is 160. I don't know the part. We're going to solve for it. So in this case, you could try to do the simplification method if you wanted to see what would happen there. Um, we can see what happens. If not, you're always welcome to do the multiplication method. That works too or the division method if you don't know what to multiply by. So if I divide these both by 5, I'm going to get 11 over 20 is equal to something over 160. And I know right away that this is going to be times 8 because the 2 and the 16 would be times 8. Do the same thing on the top, and I get 88. So 88 packages, not priority mail. Okay, so just to summarize, proportions always work. Tape diagrams are okay to use if you like them, but they don't always work. And in any situation where you are solving with a proportion, there are multiple ways to try to find that missing number. And this is not new. This is something that we used earlier in the ratios unit and earlier in the rates unit. So whichever method for solving that proportion Solving that puzzle that you prefer to use is always going to be okay. There's not any one that's perfect, and I will never tell you which one you have to use.